Isopods are adorable little creatures that lend themselves to a whole variety of uses in the classroom. They're small, they're cute, they're harmless, and they're durable enough that children won't necessarily harm them as long as they're being careful. My name is Mark Eastburn and welcome to Science from All Angles. For a small animal with easy care requirements and a variety of colors, you can't go wrong with the isopod. In my isopod collection, I have three kinds that I generally work with. I have a pale blue, which is a faster running type of isopod. I have orange isopods. And I have what are among the prettiest of all isopods, or possibly the prettiest, the zebra isopods. Just look at those cute little buggers. To start a habitat, you'll need a plastic shoebox or Tupperware container, which you could buy at Walmart or Target. You'll also need dried bricks of coconut fiber. This is Eco Earth from Zoomed. That's available at most pet stores. As soon as you unwrap the bricks of coconut fiber, you can put them in a bucket and fill it with water. The fiber will soak up the water. You want to get it to a mixture that doesn't have any clearly dry spots but it's also not so wet that you'll be able to squeeze water out of it. That's essential to start. If it does happen to be too wet, you can just squeeze the water out of it and then place it in the container. I'd recommend it being about halfway full, spread it out, and then we can start adding the food for the isopods. In this case, I'm using bearded dragon food, but you could use rabbit pellets, uh, anything with a vegetable base that you could sprinkle in and it will get moldy through time. The isopods seem to like that, but you will need to wet it down so it's soft enough for the isopods to be able to eat it. And then once everything is nice and damp, it's time to start adding the isopods. In this case, I'm adding zebra isopods, which you can see on a paper towel. They will hide in damper areas of a terrarium. And then we just put them into the substrate. These appear to be fairly hungry. They're heading straight for the food. It's always important to pick them up carefully, but you generally students will understand that they need to be gentle with isopods. And these are all, as you can see, ready for food. munching away. After your isopods have been deposited, you can get a piece of paper towel to get it the top covered helps keep all the substrate damp. I generally would spray this with some more water just to keep everything kind of moist. Take some leaves from outside. These are oak leaves. Oak leaves are very good. They seem to be enjoyed by isopods. Pack some down, put some on top, spray them down with water. That way the isopods are able to move around and then you're pretty much set. Isopods will grow in here. They actually carry their eggs in a pouch called a marsupium. It's pretty remarkable. You'll see little isopods running around. If you really want to maintain a culture for a long time, I'd recommend some cuddle bone. And then watch how quickly your students react when they have a chance to observe isopods. They are a source of endless amazement for children of all ages. One final touch that I almost forgot was to put the top of the plastic shoe box onto the container when you're done. That way you'll hold in moisture and you'll prevent isopods from escaping. Thank you for watching. If you would like to learn more, please subscribe to my channel. You can also purchase a copy of my book at the link on this video.